Hello everyone and welcome back to one of the more dilapidated areas of Gotham for another Batman miniature game 3rd edition battle report. Today for you we have 350 rep of a Dark Knight Returns themed Batman crew versus a Lex Luthor led, it's hard to say, Lex Luthor led organised crime crew on the same table layout as last time however we're going to be using the opposite table edges so the left and right edges as you see them currently. Lots to go over with the crews so let's just jump into doing that. So here is the Dark Knight Returns Batman list, and this is actually every Dark Knight Returns model available in the range, I believe. Well, if you ignore the other option for an upgrade for Batman. So it's being led by Frank Miller Batman with his power armor upgrade and also the enhanced bat suit for plus one endurance as well, which presumably applies after the power armor, but in total that gives him 14 HP, which is pretty nice. Carrie Kelly Robin as sidekick. Also, Green Arrow, who counts as a free agent if you take Frank Miller Batman, because normally he's a leader as well. He has the Reinforced Glove upgrade to give him that double stun if he does get stuck in combat. And then we have Sons of Batman, 1, 2, and 3. I forget which is which. Uh, one is the, the one with the Batarang, and he has a radio and handcuffs, I believe. Son of Batman 2 is the one with the shotgun and pistol at the back of Batman himself there. He has patrol training, so he'll be able to deploy a little bit of deployment. And then Son of Batman 3 is this close combat guy. The more expensive and less fragile of the three, he has a grapple gun and a pair of handcuffs as well. And here is the eight models making up the organized crime list being led by Lex Luthor himself. He's back in Gotham. He'll be getting plus one to take the lead. He gives more resource points. You can have cops in his lists because he's got absolute power. And he's somehow managed to rope Solomon Grundy into helping him out. So we've got the big guy himself at the back there and then a plethora of hired goons, even some from Black Mask's crew because Lex Luthor has authority over all. So we have the tailor there who's going to be his bodyguard. We have the bull. Uh, I think there's going to be, there's so many upgrades here I'm going to forget most of them. Vipera has an extra magazine. Uh, the Tyrone the Prisoner has a bunch of upgrades, a backpack, a grapple gun and I think he has two more, like he's really kitted out. <laughs> And then for the Black Mask Thugs, the one with the sniper rifle has a silencer upgrade and also advanced weaponry to give him accurate. And then the one who is FaceTiming with his mother constantly, I believe he has a backpack as well. And there, there's definitely some equipment I'm forgetting to mention, but if it becomes relevant for what they're doing, it will be mentioned as we play the game. So we are all set up at deployment and good to go for battle round one. The Batman crew is on your left, the organized crime crew is on your right, although there is some out of deployment placements we'll cover in a second. And it is organized crime taking the lead thanks to Lex's bonus because they both rolled four, but he makes it five. Uh, the Batman crew is outnumbered. The Lex crew, well, organized crime, is eight minis to their six, so they would have two passes that they may choose to use or not. There's one phase two card being played by organized crime. It's a recovering the juice. Pick a model that's not the boss. They reveal an enemy suspect marker and live to the end of the turn. It's being played on Tyrone, the Black Gate prisoner. He has a grapple gun, so he has a pretty big threat radius. He's got the best shot of actually potentially scoring this in turn one. A bit risky, but it is a three-pointer. So we'll take a look at the organized crime crew. We've got the sniper deployed up there, uh, eight inches in. We've got Solomon Grundy next to Lex and his bodyguard, the tailor. The black mask thug who's FaceTiming with his mother, of course. Those two have audacity. Over here is Tyrone. He does have audacity, so the grapple gun is an option. The bull is next to him, who is not good defensively, but good offensively. Vipera decided to uh, hide himself there because he had hidden because the son of Batman with patrol training which gave him undercover popped up right there. The other two sons of Batman are over there, one of which has audacity, the other one doesn't but has a radio. And then the three named characters are all over here, Robin's next to the lamp and then we have Green Arrow and Batman next to each other over there. So with that we are ready to get started and jump into battle round one. The Bull got the game started for organised crime. Lex was close enough through the wall as the crow flies that he did have an uh, inspired manipulate. He started next to Tyrone over there. He just moved up his 8 and has placed an assessment marker next to Vipera, making sure that he is also blocked by the car so the son of Batman has guns, can't actually see them. That's an interesting thing to know. Uh, for, for unorganized crime crew, having only two people with guns is very rare. And there's actually, well, there's the same number of people with guns if you don't include Batarangs on the opposing side, but yeah, it's very strange for organized crime to have so few guns. So first up for the Batman crew was the Carrie Kelly Robin, and she used her tactical action to punch out the light she started next to. Incidentally, if you're wondering why the sniper 
uh, what there is, didn't activate first is because Robin and Green Arrow both have Acrobat, so they could have negated it entirely, and if he shot at Armored, Batman would have lost dice to just having the armor, so it wasn't worth it. So anyway, she punched out the light as her tactical action, then as a move action suffered impaired movement to climb up onto this roof. She's a handy person, so she is also allowed to do another manipulate for free, so she used that to put down a suspect marker. Oh, and totally forgot to mention she used every single action she had. She used her special action for concealment, which means that you can only see her if you're in base to base with her, which is pretty good because she's very fragile if someone actually does get to like take a shot at her or anything. So next up for organized crime was in fact the sniper because you may remember from uh, going over the cruise, I said that he has the silencer upgrade. Totally forgot that because the silencer up upgrade negates dodging, so he actually could have fired a Robin and may well have killed her. Yeah, she can only be seen in base to base now though, which I believe negates scope, but he decided to take a shot at Green Arrow instead, downfield over there because the scope can let you see any range. Silencer means he couldn't use Acrobat. Two dice, normal die and the strength die. Strength die needing a two plus, normal die needing a four plus because Green Arrow is defense four, and there is his roll. That's the strength die. So he actually missed and he needs to reload now. I've got a no actually, Let's just roll real quick against as if he'd shot Robin turn one. So it's still a two plus on the white dice. And she's also defense. No, she's defense five. So she was probably would have been fine. Um, no, actually, she would have taken is it six blood. <laughs> she would have taken six blood and be dead. Well, would you look at that? So the son of Batman with Batarangs, who's in the corner over there, activated. They all move eight inches. And he did so down here next to the one with the guns. And he has a radio, so even though he didn't have audacity, he could still do the Inspires if he was next to Batman, or within eight of him. And has put down a suspect marker, putting him at two to the Organized Crimes one. The Black Mask thug that likes talking to his mother while he's doing criminal activities activated without audacity, within the Inspired distance of Lex, but also a handyman, so he technically had two manipulates. He just moved up less than his eight, so that he was four outside of the suspect marker already down. He placed down one of his own. Without a special action, he can't use his less good version of hacking to start doing some suspect marker manipulation. But they're not taking the bait of the one placed over there because obviously it's right next to someone with a gun and right next to someone with audacity who hasn't gone yet. Frank Miller Batman Activate opted not to use any of his power counters that the power armor gives him for any buffs, which means he's only got 6 inches of movement because he's 8 base but the power armor slows him down a little bit because he's old and slow. So he moved up to this wall here, didn't hop it or anything. He put down a suspect marker and you can just see that there. It is the game's first snitch. So we know what this is. If no enemy ends the turn within four of it, it will score at the end of the round. Solomon Grundy activated and just moved up. He's only got six inches as well, but because of Unstoppable Monster, he gets an extra two that he must move when he activates. So he just waddled up here. He does have that aura from Unstoppable Monster that he stops manipulate actions within an aura of four, I think it is. I was going to say six, but that sounds too large. I think it's an aura of four. Unfortunately, he's really stupid, so he can't do any manipulates himself, so he can't put down suspect markers or anything like that. Giving Grundy uh, Audacity turn one is, unless you've got a lot of sewers around you, in case someone comes through them, is an aura waste. He should not have been given that. The Batman crew used one of their two passes for this turn, so the Taylor activated the bodyguard henchman who started next to Lex Luthor there. Without Audacity, but obviously inspired, so he moved up and he put down a suspect marker right there behind Grundy, so the bodyguard is being bodyguarded by an immortal zombie monster man. Green Arrow activated, and for a special action used his grapple gun. He comes with one built in, you don't have to buy the upgrade. He used it to shoot up onto the building over there. Nothing else he could do this turn because of his aiming, so he was just getting in position. That's his standard play, honestly. You want him in a position where he'll hopefully be able to just fire people for the rest of the game. But this turn anyway, he put down a suspect marker right next to the bat signal there. So Tyrone, the Blackgate prisoner, activated and he was down there and his goal was to reveal a suspect marker, if you remember, because recovering the juices played on him this turn. With the grapple gun and his base movement, he did not have enough to go after that one, which seemed like the safe play. Unfortunately, he had to go for the risky play, shooting over this building into base to base with the suspect marker there and also the son of Batman with the shotgun. He had a backpack so he could do a free remove on the suspect marker, which he did, and then he used his tactical action to punch with his reinforced gloves, Master Fighter for plus one against the defense two for willpower son of Batman. His two defense rolls were actually okay, and as a result, only the strength I got through for two stun. 
but that is half his willpower, so he's two away from getting knocked out. Now he does have Dirty Fighter, so he can shoot his guns in base to base, so Tyrone might be in trouble, and if Tyrone is not... Actually, does he have to die? What is the criteria on recovering the juice? Uh, they have to still be in the gaming area, so being knocked out is not good enough, and he does blood stun with a shotgun and pistol, actually, so I don't think he can kill him. That's a problem. So that's Son of Batman who's on half willpower activated without audacity and he decided just to put down a suspect marker because of what was just said. He can't kill Tyrone to stop recovering the juice scoring. He could knock him out potentially, not guaranteed, but potentially with Dirty Fighter, fire the shotgun point blank or the pistol, but that wouldn't kill him so it's not worth doing. So he's doing that for playing towards an objective guard. So we're already at the second last activation of the turn for organised crime in a very low, uh, low scoring game so far. Lex moved up and there wasn't really anything for him to do this turn, he just mostly moved up so Vipera would be able to uh, take his Inspire. But yeah, no one within gold range or Intimidate, so he's just going to sit there. Last activation for the turn for the Batman crew was the final Son of Batman, the melee focused one with slightly better stats. With Audacity, he rushed up and he has put down a Suspect Marker. He couldn't get close enough to punch Tyrone and he has no ranged. So now it is over to Vipera to end off the battle round. So Vipera swung round the car, using that little bit of rubble there for cover if Green Arrow decides to take a shot at him next turn. I think that would give him cover from that angle. Using the Inspire from Lex, he put down a Suspect Marker. For his actual tactical action, he shot his blood stun Silenced Pistol at the Son of Batman who was already wounded, just needing twos. Uh, but he did move and fire, so he was losing two dice. The two got through, though, for two blood, two stun, knocking him out and giving him two blood for his trouble as well. No cards scored on that, though, so that does take us to the end of battle round one. Let's see if anything else scores. So going through battle round one was not particularly high scoring, but we do have a lot to cover at the end of the round here. Tyrone survived, so recovering the juice has scored for three for organised crime, so that is done for them. The snitch that Batman put down and is still next to is obviously still there with known within four, so that has also scored for three, keeping them even. Now the two suspect markers that were placed over there have been removed to score secure the perimeter, which is phase four, remove two friendly suspect markers within two inches of a board edge for another two points, so that is five. Now that diamond means when the criteria is met within the phase, you can score the card. So presumably upon that being scored, Organised Crime is allowed to score Stick to the Plan because that criteria is now true that they have more suspect markers than enemy suspect markers in play because it's 1, 2, 3, 4 versus 1, 2, 3. It wasn't true prior to Secure the Perimeter being played and they both happen in the same phase but as far as I can tell it's it works because the diamond denotes that when the condition is met it scores even if it's both in the same phase. Now that might be wrong, but there's no clarity on that, so that's the way we're playing it today, right or wrong. And it kind of keeps them even, in fact, it almost perfect, in fact, yeah, it's perfectly even as we go into battle round two. So here we are at the top of round two, and the Batman crew is actually taking first activation. They still had one unused pass for plus one, which kind of negated the plus one Lex had and won the roll off. So they are going first. I can't remember if I mentioned or not, but the Son of Batman did not wake up, so he is staying killed and is not getting a turn, unfortunately. He has 3 HP left, because he's a 4-5. And there is only one other card being played in a Phase 1 or Phase 2 type situation, and it's another Phase 2, and it's another Recovering the Juice. Now, this is going to be played on the Tailor, right there. So if he reveals a Suspect Marker this turn and is still on the board, so i.e. not dead, it will score for another 3 points. So, the Batman crew still have two passes for this turn so they don't necessarily need to go first but they'll probably want to take advantage of it let's see so green arrow got about around two started for the batman crew and he decided to use his one kryptonite arrow that he has because even though he loses a die to cover if he shoots at vipera the kryptonite arrow does a massive four blood and as you'll know if you've seen many of the organized crimes units very few of them have more than four health so vipera has just been splatted in the head by a kryptonite arrow banged into the car there and is just paced on the floor he is gone didn't score any cards on that but did remove one of the organized crimes numbers superior numbers Tyrone activated first for organized crime and he decided to beat the living daylights out of the unconscious son of Batman I didn't bother putting the stun damage down because the thing here is if you punch an unconscious person for each hit that gets through you do one extra blood damage Tyrone used two effort he eventually did move over here where you can see him Four hits got through for four blood, 
only needed two. That son of Batman is not getting a chance to fire his guns because he is gone and that does score a message job for organized crime for two victory points. I forgot to mention also with the recovering the juice scored as well they have $200 of black market money to play with. So the son of Batman with Batarangs activated without audacity and threw Batarangs sadly out of short range so he was losing a couple of dice for throwing them out of optimal range. He just needed the one to get through on Tyrone though for two stun thanks to the two stun he did to himself with efforts and he got it so Tyrone is knocked out. No cards scored and he had a radio so he had a free inspire and he did put down a suspect marker in front of him as himself again as well. Oh on Tyrone being smacked finally drew and played a pinched mobster so that's the event marker gets placed next to the friendly model that just took damage. Any model can manipulate it to move it four inches once it's in organized crimes deployment zone it will score and it does stay in play like regardless of the round for a potential three. So it was placed into base to base with him but the bull activated without audacity moved up to using the free inspire from Lex Luthor being right there has moved it back there. We'll need to be manipulated one more time to be inside their deployment zone. The other son of Batman with audacity activated he moved down here his eight inches and has put down a suspect marker outside of four of that one there as well. Didn't do anything else and it's straight back over to organized crime. So the gangster, black mask gangster rather, that facetimes with his mother activated, he hopped over the wall with impaired movement, then he used his forced intrusion or computer intrusion, whatever it's called, the less good version of hacking, pick a suspect marker within eight and move it two instead of four. Picked that one up there and has moved it forward two, and then he swiped back to the facetime app and carried on talking to his mother. Frank Miller Batman activated and he had a fun turn. He used one of his three power counters from the power armor, to give him four inches of extra movement for a special action he used his grapple gun he shot over the little park here into base to base with Lex Luthor and you can see a lot of markers that is because I'm the surgeon was played which is the Frank Miller Batman unique card which I think we I don't think we no we did see it once against Raish and he didn't do much with it but when you perform an attack against enemy boss push all other enemy models within four four inches away so the bull got pushed into the car Tyrone's unconscious body got rolled up there they then perform a simultaneous melee attack against each other and if Frank Miller Batman knocks out the other boss you score the card. So he also has sneak attack so when he engaged Lex he efforted three times Lex wasn't allowed to effort at all. Now Lex does have adaptable and I've been forgetting to mention it but it's been defense every turn so he did have defense four or five? Four. Four. But there was three extra attacks coming in on top of his base so he took a massive ten stun he just had the pulp beaten out of him by Batman, unconscious, so that does score the I'm a Surgeon, but he gets to attack back, although he only does single stun, oh, and he loses two dice because of the medium armor, although he has only defense two in the armor, as weird as that sounds, he's easier to hit, but you lose dice. It got through, just the strength die, for one extra stun, so Batman technically took four stun there, but as a resource, now they can safely play cards as a resource, because Lex, when he's conscious, can cancel a resource card once per game. They must no pain for one resource point. He's healing two of that stun, so he's only going to have two on him. The tailor activated for organized crime next with audacity. His eight inches was just enough to touch the marker that got moved by the black mask thug that had the computer intrusion. So he removed it, covering the uh, recovering the juice criteria, assuming he is still on the table. And even if Robin knocked him out, he would still be on the table. So I don't think that can be stopped because I don't think she has a rest. Uh, and also because that was already in play he's allowed to play a card as an objective so paying tribute has also been put into play. If he places a suspect marker, a friendly suspect marker within four inches of the boss this will score. Now it doesn't say the boss has to be conscious so as long as he does that next turn, well, or turn four, that will also score. So Robin activated from up on there where she was. She fired her single blood slingshot at the black mask thug on his phone. He looked up for a second saying, hey mom, I think a kid is going to throw eggs at Ah, and then he screamed because he got pelted with, I guess they're very sharp stones to do blood damage. And it's handy as well, so it's pretty consistent with doing damage. Ideally played with a non-lethal ammo, but not available unfortunately. So three blood damage to him, and then she hopped off the back of the shed there and fled over there because she doesn't want anything to do with Solomon Grundy. And even though I think he's the last one to go, so she's in no danger. Oh, actually, the sniper up there has to go, but he has to reload. Uh, she used concealment, so she has to be in base to base to be seen. So yeah, just two activations left for organized crime. He's reloading. I guess you could technically he shuffled a little bit, whatever, but he's done. Solomon Grundy, unstoppable monster, charge two, walk six. It got him there. He does have reach on his tombstone, 
but that's still too far away for him to reach Batman this turn, but he's, he's running back to try and help poor Lex out a bit. And that does take us to the end of Battle Round 2. So then about Battle Round 2, Lex has woken up, which probably shouldn't come as a surprise given he has 8 willpower. So he is conscious, but knocked down still as we jump into the next round. So let's go over cards. Uh, let's see, in play, paying tribute stays in play because the tailor could still potentially put a suspect marker close to Lex and it stays in play between rounds, as does Pinched Mobster because the icon is there and that's not enough to score. The Recovering the Juice does score for three though because the tailor is on the table and he did reveal a suspect marker. For the Batman crew, they score another Secure the Perimeter by removing the two suspect markers that the Sons of Batman put down for another two, and with those gone, Organized Crime could once again score a stick to the plan to negate it. And with that, we can jump into Battle Round 3. So here we are with the board state at the top of the penultimate round, Battle Round 3. Um, I didn't mention it specifically, but it should have been implied. Lex woke up, but obviously Tyrone has not, so he's still staying in the dirt. Uh, I don't know if he has anything to fear. I think the only people who have arrest is one son of Batman with handcuffs that have been purchased for him. But anyway, we can go over new cards being played, although keep in mind there's two organised crime cards still in play. They are playing their final, recovering the juice, and it's being played on the FaceTiming Black Mask guy. So if he reveals his assessment marker and is still on the table, again, doesn't say conscious, that will score for a massive three. And the Batman crew is playing their Die Hard, and it's being played on Green Arrow because he's basically safe where he is, even if the sniper takes a shot at him and gets like full damage through, he couldn't kill him. So that's a, a relatively safe two points on Green Arrow this turn. And it is the Batman crew retaining first activation, which I don't think I said either. So with that, let's jump into their first action. So fearing Solomon Grundy, Batman activated first, and he spent a power counter on another power armor upgrade. So if he gets attacked this turn, he ignores two damage markers every for like for the attack that comes in. It's not just one attack either if multiple people decide to take a swing at him. So uh, he's pretty defensive because medium armor already steals two dice from the attacker. He hopped the wall with his rubbish movement and got into base to base with the FaceTime thug. Attacked him. You can tell his mom is a fan of Batman. She was like, oh, is that Batman? Can I get his autograph? And he was like, mom, don't embarrass me in front of him. And then he just trailed off and his blood and teeth splattered across the screen. So he knocked him out. Only four stun, only two punches got through all said and done, which wasn't great. But he only has four willpower, so he's knocked out. And that scores the Tonight We Are The Law. A model with the Dark Knight Returns trait, which the entire team does. Performs an attack that makes an enemy model KO. If they have one or more blood markers when this happens... Score this card, then remove the blood. I guess he felt bad. <laughs> like he saw that he was FaceTiming with his mother and he felt bad, so he patched up his blood wounds from Robin. Still knocked him out, though, and still scored a card worth two. So thanks to that Black Mask thug getting knocked out, plans had to change. Lex Luthor activated, suffered impaired movement to stand up and then hop the fence and ended. He actually should be on those, but it's too wobbly, so he's on the far side there. Doesn't really matter, he's just getting in position so that he can place a suspect marker within four, assuming he stays conscious and didn't do anything else with his turn because there's no point intimidating Batman because he's already gone, so no special actions would make a difference. And goading him away from Solomon Grundy would just be a net negative. Green Arrow activated next for the Batman crew. Without Audacity, he removed his own suspect marker they placed down in round two to do at the last possible turn that you can do it a valuable commodity. So he's now holding on to the loot and is worth five victory points, two of which cash out at the end of this turn, and these three will cash out at the end of the final turn. The tailor activated within the Inspire radius of Lex Luthor put down a suspect marker using that manipulate, and that met the criteria for paying respects because he revealed an enemy suspect marker last turn. So now that is for another hundred... Actually, I don't know if the black market money got drained when Lex Luthor got knocked out. I think they have to be removed as a casualty. I'll double check that if it, if it becomes relevant. But either way, he revealed an enemy suspect last turn, and this turn he put one, a friendly one within four of his boss, so that has scored for two, and he used the free manipulate to do that. He moved into base to base with Batman and engaged him in combat, however, he loses two dice for just the medium armor that Batman's wearing, so that gave him just the strength die, and because of the buff he gave himself this turn, he negates two damage from the attack, which is the most he could do. So he did nothing. Carrie Kelly, Robin activated, she clambered back up onto this shed again, fired more of her slingshot ammo, I think that's the last of her ammo, I don't remember if she was two or three, into the back of the tailor because there was no point hitting Lex Luthor because the tailor would just bodyguard it anyway. 
It would have done only one blood because she rolled quite badly. It got converted to stun though because the very apt card since she's on it, non-lethal ammo got played for two points, converted it all to stun. The bull activated for organized crime next and when Lex Luthor moved it was made sure that uh, the bull was just within eight for that Inspire since he doesn't have Audacity. He moved up to the event marker, manipulated with that Inspire to move it and that is inside just barely, it's like half and half. The Organized Crime Deployment Zone, which scores the Pinched Mobster card that got put in play last turn for three. So the son of Batman, who has been throwing Batarangs, activated with Audacity this time. It was only Green Arrow who didn't have Audacity for the Batman crew. He moved into base to base with Tyrone. He actually has a single blood handy shiv. So don't tell Batman, but he went over to an unconscious man and just stabbed the you-know-what out of him. Did four blood with all four hits getting through. I would have done one extra on each hit as well because of him being unconscious, but it doesn't matter because that is enough. The Tyrone has been uh, feloniously assaulted by a less than stable son of Batman. Didn't score any, anything on it, just got rid of him. Oh, sorry, I also forgot to mention, he's the one with the radio, so he radioed Batman afterwards. Didn't tell him what he did and put down a suspect marker. Solomon Grundy activated. He did want to hop the wall to go after Batman, but unfortunately there's not enough space there with the unconscious henchman that his base wouldn't be overlapping and you're not allowed to overlap bases. You can pass through them, but you can't overlap them. So he couldn't go there and his movement unfortunately did not give him enough to get into base to base with the son of Batman and also I, I could have sworn he had reach on his tombstone. He doesn't, which kind of sucks when you consider he only has six movement and then two extra for unstoppable monster. So he moved his eight, he's there. He hasn't really done anything the entire match, which is a great shame because this list was designed in such a way that he'd be like the the piece that kind of holds everything together. No guns, have Solomon Grundy kind of be the thing that you can't ignore, which I guess to a certain extent is true. Carrie Kelly had to stay over there because she didn't want to tangle with him over here. Yeah, Green Arrow ran away over to the other side of the table. I guess you've got to consider it like that, like he's a denial piece rather than... Uh, I smashed everything, although it is hard to make him work in any list. That said, I mean, Organized Crime are doing perfectly fine here, it says he hasn't had a chance to smash anything. Oop, as I knock over some scenery. So, he has moved there within smashing distance, potentially, in the final turn, but sadly didn't do anything this turn. Last activation for the Batman crew in the penultimate round was the other son of Batman, the one that doesn't shiv people to death. He walked up there, he hasn't had much to do, it's a shame, because he is really decent in close combat. He almost has a psychic stat line for like 30 something rep. But he walked up there, he put down assessment marker and it's become the second snitch or maybe the final snitch. Either way, it is in play and now it's over to, I think it's just the sniper to end off the turn. Yes, it is, yeah. So the sniper obviously had a tasty line of sight on Batman there, but the medium armor would take away two dice and he's only rolling the strength dying one other. So that wouldn't have been any good. Plus he would negate two of the damage anyway because of the buff he gave himself. So he opted instead to fire all the way down the table at Green Arrow and he has a silencer so no dodging and the reason he did that is because even though he's rolling two if both had gotten through for six and the strength die was a crit he has bleed two so that actually would have been enough to kill Green Arrow only one die got through all said and done it was the strength die without a crit so three blood to Green Arrow and that does take us to the end of the turn so at the end of the penultimate round the Black Mask Thug who's talking to his mother or was is staying unconscious so his game is done essentially. No other cards being played so it's just a case of looking at the ones in play. For organized crime recovering the juice that was tied to that black mass thug that does not score and has been discarded. For the Batman crew they had a few in play so we need to come round here. Green Arrow lived so Die Hard scores for two. The viable commodities he's holding on to stays in play and the sniper's out of ammo now down here so no no real threat, plus he would have needed to reload anyway. And the snitch that the Son of Batman played also scored for three. So with that, let's jump into the final round. So the top of round four, dawn of the final day. Everyone's scrambling for those last minute points. No additional cards being played by either side, but Organized Crime has snatched back first activation. The only card still in play is the Viable Commodities. I think everybody except Green Arrow, who's conscious, has audacity uh, and the sniper who can't do anything because he's stuck up there in the building with no ammo or a gun he can't reload so with that let's see what happens Solomon Grundy activated and he charged into the son of Batman to get revenge for Tyrone he attacked him with his blood stun tombstone it's got like bleed too handy overwhelming etc 
and uh, he's only defense too. So six blood, six stun. That's on a Batman. There's his comeuppance, and that did score the other message job for taking out, uh, making them a casualty uh, and friendly. Oh, sorry, not friendly, an enemy miniature for two victory points. So Solomon Grundy did something. Robin activated and she fired the last of her slingshot ammo. She does actually have three loads of ammo. I thought it was two. Into the back of the tailor's head. Three hits, converted it to stun with the other non-lethal ammo. So that's scored for two. However, in him taking damage, it has triggered a pinched mobster. So there is an event marker in base to base with him. Uh, it is potentially feasible that it will get into their deployment this turn if three people manipulate it. Maybe two would be enough because it can go over the wall. Either way, she then ran away to hide just in case. So the tailor activated and manipulated the event marker, so it's been moved four inches to the far side of the wall there. Then he just moved back to stay next to Lex, although realised afterwards he has one willpower left, which means he can't expend one willpower to take a hit, unless you're allowed to take uh, an effort that would knock you out, to then also just be knocked out by whatever's attacking Lex. That doesn't seem plausible, so that might end up being bad for Lex. So Batman moved in, he used his last power counter, which means every successful hit from him needs two defense dice this turn. Is that overwhelming or the other one? Devastating? I always forget. Either way, we went after Lex, who has two stun because he healed one in the last turn. Uh, one hit just needed to get through to knock him out, and as previously stated, the tailor can't save him. Six stun got through, which was more than enough to knock him out again, so he's not getting a turn. And actually scoring the Bruce Wayne specific card, which can be in the deck, because the other one is Frank Miller's Batman specific. This one is just generic if you have a Bruce Wayne who's a leader, so they both can be in. And that scores for making the opponent's boss KO, so that's another three points. So there was two activations left for organised crime, but neither of them can achieve anything. Sniper up here can't do anything, he's in deployment, can't even put down assessment marker because there's one down there. So he can't do anything. The bull didn't have audacity and thanks to Lex being knocked out he can't use the manipulate to move the event marker, so that's not going to score. So he just moved and hid. So now it's a case of whether Green Arrow or the final son of Batman can do anything to score for them. And then that will take us to the end of the game. So without Audacity there is nothing Green Arrow can do. The only thing that can be done is the son of Batman can move his 8 down into here, put down a suspect marker and it is the final snitch. So we're just saying that has been in play and it's scoring. Valuable Commodities is on Green Arrow so that's scoring. There's no point in him shooting arrows at anyone because that won't score anything. So that does take us to scoring, and this has been a, a pretty rough and tumble match for both sides. I think both sides have done very well, so I'm very curious who has taken this. So apologies for the light blaring a little bit on the new shiny glossy cards they made, but this is where we're doing it. Let's see. Actually, like the, the Batman deck feels thicker, so I think they have probably taken it, and the, the organized crime cards in general are worth less. So I think it's a safe bet the Batman's won, but let's see. So, three... 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 25, 27, 30 on the dot. That is a very, very good score. 30 is going to be tough to beat with the organized crime deck, but let's see. 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I just realised there was actually a Phase 4 card for Organised Crime to play, I think. I think they had the last um, uh, stick to the plan. So that would have been two extra points, because they have more suspect markers down. So, But even with that, though, they can't come close to, to 30, which is a shame. It's safe to say that Solomon Grundy is not worth the, his points in any setup he can be in, because he's too slow. Which is unfortunate. This particular map player didn't play well to him either. But the, like, the list would have done better had he not been in it. Maybe put in a, a special henchman of some variety. They cost like 30 to 50 rep. That still gives you another 50 rep to have two cheap and cheerful guys to go put suspect markers down. They would have done better with more trash. <laughs> more organised crime trash henchmen than the giant Solomon Grundy. But it's such a great looking model and such a fun character. It's just a shame he doesn't really work in any lists in 3rd edition. He wasn't really that great in 2nd edition either, to be honest, which is a great shame. But it's nice to have him on the table anyway. It's not always about optimising lists, or well, certainly not here anyway. Lex Luthor is great um, in terms of just having like a, a very powerful, potent 
organised crime leader, although I think his biggest asset is being allowed to bring cops, thanks to his corrupt role, or absolute power, sorry. So, it wasn't taken advantage of here, but it would have been interesting going up against, like, a Dark Knight Returns list. Instead of Solomon Grundy, have a few cops. Have, like, the JCPD detective, and, and or Flass, or just any of the generic cops that are slightly tougher than your organised crime for roughly the same rep cost. And that makes them better running around putting down suspect markers. Sons of Batman, I don't get why two of them are defence too, honestly, I, when they only have like four or five HP as well. Don't get that at all, and four willpower, but they, they're certainly good offensively. I don't quite get how they fit in. I guess it's because of the, the... I have mentioned before when we did the last Dark Knight Returns kind of themed list, but if you have everyone who is either Dark Knight Returns or Cop, you can choose to take blood damage instead of stun damage to effort. Wasn't it relevant here at all this time around, but that is something. And I think they're designed with that in mind. So they have a little bit more HP than they do willpower. So you're supposed to effort blood damage with them. But the defense too, I just don't get. But anyway, that's enough talking. Thank you very much for watching. I sincerely hope enjoy you enjoyed. Come back in probably about a week for another one. Until then, ta-ta for now.